Good evening, all. I wrap scene with your financial market wrap up, and this wrap up is for Monday, the last trading day of February, the first trading session for March, and that is of 2022. And the evening session begins the March trade. So as we look at the market, it's a mixed bag. You're trying a little bit of up and down in the stock industry. It's not going anywhere. Most of the metal markets are a bit higher. The dollar's up about 12 points. You're off a little bit in the euro. Uh, I look to see is the market getting anything out of the yen, and the market's actually down. So you're getting that point where the market's going, ah, okay, I don't have to put the bid into the bonds and the notes and the yen, the safe havens. You're up again in all the energy markets. And as you know by now, I don't have to go through this for you. The SWIFT, that's S-W-I-F-T, the SWIFT measures have grabbed hold. Uh, Russia is reeling from it. Uh, they may not say so, but when your currency loses 30% of its value in a day, when your stock exchanges can't open, where there's a run on ATM machines, when a country says you cannot do business and take currency, the, uh, any foreign currency, out of the country. When if you are a major company and you're being told you have to sell back your currency reserves, guess what? There's something wrong. And that's basically what is going on. Russia is feeling the pressure of a NATO they didn't expect, nor did I think NATO. It is really unified. It is something to behold. Now, I, I got to burst the bubble. What do you do to protect Ukraine? I mean, it's wonderful, all the hurrahs. It's all the wonderful. We're going to send you these armaments and all, and I get it. The problem is, if you think back to nights of years gone by, there's a siege about to take place. There's a 17-mile convoy. It looks like it's going to encircle some of the cities. They can either level the cities with artillery and never have to put their soldiers into a city, but then they end up with rubble and they don't have anything to control. Or they can get there and, to a degree, wait it out and starve the cities out. What do I mean by that? Once you got it, there's nothing coming in by land, sea, or otherwise. These are cities of millions of people. Where are they going to get the resources? Where are they going to get the goods that they need? Nobody's mentioning that. And then you get the street fighting where there's an attrition that goes on. But if you're asking army for army, get serious. I mean, the Russian army is formidable. They committed about two-thirds from what I'm reading. The other third could be committed now. The Russians can't afford for this to go on forever because world opinion will work against them. So there's a balancing act. I don't know what the act is. I'm not a military planner or strategist. I read a lot, and that's what I'm reading, and that's what we have to understand. By the way, some of you don't like my political opinions. Here's what I have to say to that. Don't watch my station. Could it be simpler? It's my station, my rules. I'll do as I see fit. In the S&P, as the market's coming down, as you can see, it is staying underneath the 18-day average. The bias is still down. You have this week the Reserve Bank of Australia, you have the Bank of Canada, and these are monetary policy meetings. We have on Tuesday the State of the Union from President Biden. This will probably be the most uh, important speech of his lifetime. He gets to be a speaker during wartime. Very important. Uh, and I do mean that. Very important. He gets to be presidential. Um, I hope. The next step we get then is Fed Chair Powell on Wednesday. We have non-farm payrolls. We have Chinese, I think, PMIs. We have so much data coming out this week. It all gets swallowed up, though, each morning that we wake up and some event happens in Ukraine, and that's how it's going to be for a while. Everything gets swallowed up. But in any case, you're in a downtrend. Even a hard rally You'd be hard-pressed to do much better than get back to the 45-64 level, about 200 points up from where you're at. When you take a look at the daily bar chart, you came down and you're getting your bounce. And that's all that I see this as. You still have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. You'd have to get up over this high to tell me, ah, the market's gotten to the point where the bounce is enough to kill the downtrend, but it won't start an uptrend if you keep this pattern of just going up, 
because you wouldn't have higher lows, higher highs. When I take a look at key resistance as a pro, and I think I am, I think I expect other pros to be selling the market between 44.11.50 and the 44.46 level, the 200-day average up to there. The risk will be defined as probably right over that market, and they'll say, hey, if it gets over that, something changed. That doesn't mean they'll get bullish. When I go to the uh, Bollinger Bands, you got down to them, you held them. Now, one of the things that people don't get, and I see this all the time, they're going to tell me, and I, I get it, people write me, it's going to be different this time, Ira. This market's getting under that. You don't understand. It's going to crater. This is going to turn out to be sideways action. It's going to let go. And all I do is say, okay. You could easily be right because it does happen from time to time. I don't know that that won't happen again. But what I do know is I don't want to be the guy pressing it under the Bollinger Band. You do it. Because more times than not, you're going to get your head handed to you. That's the key. So on these rallies, I can see the areas to sell. And then I put momentum with it. So we corrected past tense and oversold condition. Oversold means you've got the slow stochastic reading, either leg of it, the blue or the red, under 30. You had that. And as they get out of it, you're no longer oversold. I see a lot of resistance up there, and that's where I think the pros are going to sell into the market. And the reason I'm putting micro minis, I think that's what you have to use now. I think you throw away the e-mini contracts. They're too risky, too much money at one time. I think you can build a better position using a bunch of these uh, micro contracts and do yourself a better favor. I mean, with electronic trading, <laughs> By the time you hit it, you own it. You do understand that. It's that fast. It's unbelievable if you're doing, hey, I want it at the market. Boom. It's, you own it. Higher lows, higher highs. Resistance in the uh, NASDAQ a little different here. First, it's the 18-day average, but you have the higher high, higher low. The trend is up. The bias is down. Bias is determined by where price is to the 18-day average. I will call this a contra trend rally, and you'll say why. Because the bias sort of sets to me the trend. If the market's under the 18-day average, I'm looking for sell conditions, not buying conditions. If it's over it, I'm looking for buying conditions. Therefore, getting the market going with higher lows, higher highs is a contra trend move, because I'm looking for the sell. I expect it to fail up there, not in the sell mode yet, because you got higher lows, higher highs, but that's my overall impression of the market. In the Dow, should the market get over the 34034 level? Well, then I'm going to look for it to get back up here. But look at all this resistance. How do you get through this with the current environment we're dealing with? You got the 100 day, I'm sorry, the 18 day in red, the 100 in the green, and the gray right here. You got these three averages. You got a lot of layers of resistance. Can you rally at any point in the gate to downtrend, which you have right now? Lower highs, lower lows? Absolutely. All you got to do is get over 34034, but it's not a buy signal. It ends that leg down, which culminated, I thought, first time you hit the Bollinger Band, it was the first zone that I think the pros took money, but you haven't ended the leg. To end it, you got to take that out. Otherwise, now that you've gotten away from being oversold, you could fall back again. In the Russell, I told my subscribers this morning, you know, I think we walk away from the Russell for selling purposes right now. It seems to act like a market that wants to do better than the others. Now, it's caught in the sideways action as well. I could be so wrong on what I'm saying. But right now, it's in the middle of no man's land anyways. Unlike the other markets, it's over the 18-day average, right? The others aren't. Got it? So I see something a little different. That's good enough for me. In the VIX cash, where do you think I think we're going to fail? So if you can't get up in all this news again and get back up to like this 38 level, what does that tell you? If this market starts slipping back, it's a bit friendly at this point in time for the stock indices. This goes down, they go up. This goes up, they go down. Just think of it that way. In the 30-year bond, you have a market that's already overbought. 
So we got up today, the panic was there. Oh my gosh, you know what's going on. You're gonna culminate this rally, in my opinion, up here. I think you're still ultimately looking to be short. Why? The Fed. They haven't even begun. They're going to begin these interest rate hikes. They're determined to shut that market down. They're determined to create higher interest rates. That is the enemy of that market. So let the war crowd enjoy their moment in the sun, but ultimately the market's probably going the other way. Same in the 10 year notes. You know, we were just to 198 or so in the 10 year. Today we're at 183. But these are the swings as people don't know what to make out of uh, what's going on. Well, they know what to make out of. They're scared to death of what's going on with uh, the war. And it is a war now. The war between uh, Russia and Ukraine calls for NATO members. Eight of them want the Ukraine now to be uh, admitted to NATO. The moment that happens, you could have a nuclear war. Do I think the other 30 or 22 members, there's 30 members, will vote for that? No. I think they'll give Ukraine all the help they can, but I think the last thing they want to do is see NATO actually fighting Russian troops. Now, it will happen that way if Russia's stupid. If they do a cyber attack and it hits Poland, another country, and shuts that down, game over. They, they could easily, and I use the word could, they don't have to, they could easily say that's the attack and away you go. At that point, as strong as Russia is, Russia's over. In the dollar index, you're fighting your battle at the upper Bollinger Band. Trend is up, bias up. The trade is buying this market on the brakes. Momentum is flat in the market. But don't get caught up. I, I, I do my best here to show you. If you're buying over these bands, you get yourself into trouble. That doesn't mean, hey, we wake up in the morning and God knows we have another event that, that can kick everything up. If you want to play for those, do so. I, I, I don't want to. The market's all-knowing. We're not. You got down in the euro the other way. If you've taken out of bear sides money against it, you look pretty good right now. Are you looking to sell? Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with going short on rallies as long as you don't exceed this 112, 78 and a half number. In the British pound, if the market can clear over here, the 134.38 level, why not get back up into the bigger resistance? But it's one thing to say that it can get up there. I wouldn't tell you to buy it. The bias is down. The trend is down. Let somebody else own that. Bitcoin. I was waiting for Bitcoin to come alive. Now, you'll say, what? what's he saying? Folks, it's an anonymous way for Russians to move money. Isn't that what Bitcoin's always been about? Don't let the IRS know that you have it. Of course, they changed the law in America about it, but you, you understand what I'm getting at. And now if you're Russians, the cryptocurrency world's live. All of a sudden, it's live. If we can't follow it, how the heck's Russia going to follow it? So uh, I think people are putting their money as fast as they can into this, and you're seeing that develop. That's what I personally think is going on, and I wouldn't be surprised if the upper Bollinger Bear comes alive. The trend is up. The bias is up. Suddenly supports 41,000, 529. You'd have to get back under 37,000 right here, 205. And boy, do, did we not nail it here? In this video and in my morning subscriber video, I said, you don't want to be short after that number. I was thinking that Bitcoin has to make sense. I didn't know when. I think everybody's realizing right now that that could be a way that Russian money's moving around. Now, we're going to have to move away from the uh, this. We're going to have to go to May, but May, so I'm not going to include that. Why? Because there's no more April Brent. Uh, and we'll do that right here. It's off the board now. There is April crude. I just missed doing that. You have a higher high, a lower low. You can see you're running the band here. You're not trending. And would I ever tell you to buy over a Bollinger band? Not in your wildest dream. Same in the May heating oil, April natural gas, no trend. You fell back today, but I don't think there's much downside. You came out of the uptrend. You made your run right here at the upper Bollinger band. Uh, you missed it by 12, no, uh, 22 cents roughly. 
okay, that's not bad, okay, okay. Uh, and you peaked out in that zone, and when you came back under this, that ended the uptrend. So you're no longer trending in the market, you're just drilling this market sideways. So for those of you that trade these markets, some of you don't like the futures because if you don't know how to use the micro minis and the stock indices, I get it. Uh, and you don't like the full size, but you love the ETFs. I get it. And you can also trade all these different markets with it. Now you do know every one of these stock indices, what are they based on? Futures. What do you think these interest rates are based on? Futures. What do you think the energy is based on? Futures. What do you think the metals are based on? The currency is based on? It's all futures. Just another way to trade them. Just slowing the game down. I realize it. So I treat them that way for you. Every Saturday you get a bigger picture because I do weekly charts. During the week, every now and then I'll throw out a bonus video, a special report. I want to do more, but right now we're swamped. I'm swamped running my brokerage company. I'll give you trade ideas as to what's going on, where we're at, the fundamentals, the technical analysis, because unlike you, I'm up 3.15, 3.30 in the morning, scouring papers all over the world, what's going on, websites, what can I tell you, what's moving the market, and that's how we start off the morning. Start off what's going on, where's the market moving, why is it moving in one specific area, what reports are coming out today? What's the expectation on that report? In other words, like tomorrow, we have a series of reports coming out. My traders know it. They know it well before you. What's the trade looking for? What's the reaction to it? So I start the futures part of this at 5.20 in the morning or so, and then I do the spider ETF. I let the first half hour of trade go. Let the stupid money come in the market. That's what I've always said. Plus, we want to finish up as many government reports as we can, and they come out typically before 9 o'clock, and that's a.m. Central Time, that I'm recording and giving you this. How do you find out more? It's so simple. Just go to our website, www.irapstein.com. Go up to the very top where it says Research. Everything is explained for you there. Take a look. You see how everything works. Okay, pretty simple for you to sign up and get it. Excuse me. I'm Ira. You have a good day. Talk to you tomorrow. Coffee.